everyone, I'm Claire. Welcome to your practice. You shouldn't need any props for this. You maybe just want a yoga mat. And if you've not got a mat, just make sure you're on carpet or something that's gonna be comfortable on your knees. When we're on the knees in this practice, if it's too much on your knees, just pop something underneath your knee, maybe a rolled up towel, blanket, or just something for a little bit more padding. So hopefully you've done my warm up first. If you haven't, make sure you're already nice and warm in your body as we're gonna crack straight on. So let's come into our downward facing dog. Bring your hands down, spread the fingers, lift the hips up and back. And take a few breaths in downwards facing dog with some movement. Maybe just bending one knee then the other. And in downwards facing dog start to connect to your breath. So big inhale. Big exhale. Maybe give the head a little shake side to side. Lift the hips up high. Bend the knees if you need. That's absolutely fine. Okay, from your downwards facing dog, step your feet closer together. Let the big toes touch, bend the knees, look forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold all the way down over the legs. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, reach up. Hands come down to prayer at your heart center. Okay, so we're gonna to start to add on to this now today. So, from the front of the mat, big toes touch, stand tall, inhale. Lift the hands, come all the way up. And as you get here, come up onto your tiptoes as high as you can. Take a moment to find some balance. If feet together is a bit too much, just take them wider, come on up. And play with your balance, it doesn't have to be perfect. Take a big inhale. Exhale, we're going to fold all the way down over the legs, dropping down. Inhale, lift up halfway. And then let's step the right leg back. Drop the right knee down, untuck the right toes, lift the arms all the way up towards the ceiling. So in this lunge position, we're looking for 90 degrees-ish with both legs. Arms rise up high and we've got a neutral pelvis, neutral spine, getting nice and tall through the crown of the head. Holding here, imagine that you're pressing your right hip slightly forwards so that the right glute is really engaging. Okay, from here take your right hand down to the floor next to your left foot, lift the left arm up into the air. Find this twist through the spine, this rotation. Again, you're tall out through the crown of your head. Smooth and steady breath. Okay, so this will be a balance and it might feel like I'm cueing this the wrong way, but from this position, Start to take this left hand up in the air, back behind you, lift the right arm forwards, corridor twist. So this might feel the wrong way because we're twisting through the spine, squeezing everything in the body as if we are in that narrow corridor space. So imagine you're in a really small narrow space, everything in one line. And it might very well be a balance. So we're squeezing the thighs together even though they're not touching, maybe looking to the back hand for an extra challenge, or just staying in neutral. Keeping the breath. Okay, from here we're going to take it back down. Right hand comes all the way to the floor, left hand reaches up to the ceiling. This right shin that's on the floor behind you, slide it even further off to the right hand side, even off the mat if you can. Push the left leg all the way back behind you. Lift the left leg up into the air. Okay, if you're not balanced, Readjust that right leg and make sure that you've got a good balance here to then lift the left leg. Bring your left hand onto the hip. It doesn't matter how high up that back leg's going, but we're gonna take hold of the hip here and start to do some small little pulses with that back leg. And all I'm looking for you to try and do is push your hips slightly forwards. Imagine that underneath this hand, we don't wanna feel loads of movement. So if it's just waving around all over the place, then there's a lack of control. So holding onto the hip, trying to make sure this doesn't move under the hand and then lift and lower, very small, in the left leg. So it might be the tiniest of movements. And I'm hoping that you start to feel some engagement, probably in the glutes, but it might happen in other places too. Okay, from here, slowly, left foot steps all the way back to the front where it came from and the right shin comes back in line. 
Take the right shin over now to your left side and take it all the way over. Come all the way up. So left toes point to the front of the mat. Right shin is across the mat. Lean onto that left leg. Right arm reaches up by the ear. And imagine your bicep is really close to the ear here. Send some energy through the right fingertips. Let the head relax. And then push your hips forwards. Take one more big breath here. Okay, we're going to come up and take your right hand to the back of your mat. Left hand follows. Guide the body around into your plank pose. From plank, lower knees. Untuck toes. Lower the rest of the body with control. Low cobra, head and chest lift. Really feel like you're dragging your hands backwards and you're pulling the chest through the arms. And downwards facing dog. Come onto your knees, spread the fingers, lift the hips up high, settle into downwards facing dog, take a few breaths. And remember, try to straighten your spine and your arms. And if your knees are bent, that's absolutely fine. Press your stomach a little bit towards the thighs. Lift the hips. Okay, step your feet together. Bend the knees, look forwards, step or jump. We're at the back of the mat now. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, lift all the way to standing. Take your hands up. Pause here. Come right up high onto tiptoes. And just wait and find that balance. And if you come down a few times, that's fine. Just come back up in your own time. Okay, take a big inhale, exhale, drop the heels, come all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, step the left leg back, drop the left knee, untuck the left toes, lift all the way up into 90 degrees with both legs. Straighten up your spine as much as possible, head is set right up on top. Energy through the fingertips so the arms are not up and half asleep, they're really up and awake and alive. Again, a slight push forward with the left hip, so it does feel like that left glute is engaging whilst we're here. From here, left hand starts to come down by your right foot. Right arm reaches up into the sky and twists through the rib cage, through the chest. Again, it's not so much about how high up you can go. We're just trying to get that rotation in the thoracic spine. So spin the rib cage. Now we're going to come up to our corridor twist from here. So this right hand in the air starts to keep on pulling back. Left hand lifts off from the floor. We've got this rotation through the spine, squeeze the thighs together even though they're not touching. And breathe. You can look back, you can look anywhere you want to help the balance. We're going to reverse it. Start to take your left hand back to the ground, right hand reaches up into the air. Pausing here. Slide that left shin off to the left hand side. It's not a little bit, it's quite a bit that we need to take it out. It's like a stabiliser for you. Slide the right leg back along the mat and then get that length through the body. From here making sure the left wrist is underneath the left shoulder, lift the right leg up in the air. Again, imagine your hips are just pressing slightly forwards here. Take your right hand onto the right hip. Try not to have any movement underneath that hand. And two tiny little pulses with the right leg. So you're probably going to feel a little bit of movement under the hand, but what we don't want is just everything to go with the leg. It's just a movement of the leg, even if it's tiny. Trying to keep everything in the pelvis and the torso as still as possible. Three or four more. Okay, we're gonna step the right foot back to the front with control, right heel lands. Slide the left shin into the center and then take it all the way over to the right hand side. Come all the way up, lean onto the right leg. Left bicep by left ear, reach the fingertips. 
And again, whilst you're here, don't let the hips sink back. Instead, press them forwards. Feel like you're opening up that right hip a little bit more. Okay, one more breath, big inhale. As you exhale, left hand all the way to the front of the mat, right hand will follow. Step the body back into plank. And lower knees, lower the rest of the body nice and slow. Inhale, low cobra, pause in this low cobra. So it might look like I'm pushing the floor, but I'm not. It feels like you're dragging your hands backwards, pulling your chest through your arms. And see the difference, feel that engagement. Okay, downwards facing dog, hips up and back. Lift them up, straighten up the spine, bend the knees if you need. Lengthen your spine is the most important thing here. Spread your fingers. One more deep breath. Step your feet together. Bend knees, look forward, step or jump, top of the mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, come up to standing, sweep the hands. And when you get up here to the top, stay here and come up high onto your tiptoes, finding that balance. And from your balance, lower your heels, bring your hands to prayer, heart center. So we're gonna do all of that one more time, just a bit quicker now. So if you want to take it at your own pace, that's absolutely fine. Just see how you go. From the front of the mat, hands to prayer. Inhale, lift the hands up. Get tall. Come onto your tiptoes high up as you can. Pause and find that balance. Take a big inhale. Exhale, lower down over the legs. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step the right leg back. Drop the right knee down. And come all the way up into your lunge. Feel like you're pressing your right hip slightly forward, left hip slightly back. Take a big inhale. Take your right hand down to the floor next to the left foot. Open up through the rib cage. And then think about that corridor twist. We're in the right place. Just imagine someone's pulling your left hand, bringing you all the way up, corridor twist. This time, if you want to, you can maybe even lean on the back thigh and lean back slightly into a back bend. Come all the way back up. Right hand to the floor. Left hand reaches up. Right shin out to the right hand side. Left leg pushes back. From here, left hand to left hip. Hover the left leg. Small, tiny pulses. And trying your best to keep everything else solid and engaged. Making sure that right wrist is under the right shoulder and it's not really far forwards. Step your left foot slowly with control to the top. Think about landing with the heel first if you can. Slide that back shin now all the way over to the left hand side. Come up. Lean onto the left thigh with the left arm. Right arm is by the ear. Find your side stretch. Weight through the fingertips. Imagine you're sending energy all the way out and through. One more deep breath. Come all the way up with the torso. Right hand to the back of the mat. Left hand follows, step into your plank pose. Lower knees, lower the rest of the body. Low cobra, drag the hands backwards, pull the chest through. Take a big full breath. Downwards facing dog, lift hips up and back. Settle into down dog just for one breath. Step your feet together, bend the knees, look forward, step or jump in between the hands at the back of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold, down. Inhale, lift up to standing. And when you get to the top, come onto your tiptoes. Take a pause. Lower your heels, lower your hands. Inhale, lift back up. Come onto tiptoes, hold. Exhale, lower heels, lower all the way down. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step the left leg back. Drop the back knee, untuck the left toes, lift all the way up into your 90-90 lunge. Again, left hip presses slightly forwards, right hip pulls slightly backwards. From here, left hand down to the floor by the right foot, right arm spins up, ribs open. 
And then corridor twist. Imagine someone's pulling your right hand all the way back behind you. Left hand will follow. You're in a narrow corridor space, squeezing the body into this narrow line. Left hand back to the floor. Oh, we forgot our back lunge. If you want to, you can lean on the back leg. And then we come all the way forward. Left hand down, right hand is up. Left shin is gonna slide out to the left hand side. Right leg pushes back behind you. So you can stay like this. Right hand can come to the hip. If you're comfortable to lift the right leg up, do. It can be or down on the floor. If you want to do these pulses right by the floor, then you can. Otherwise, it's lifted. Again, we're trying not to go into a big back bend here, so we're trying to pull the belly in, hold onto the hip, and just bounce the leg up and down, but with as much control as possible. So we're just trying to keep this in the hip joint. Okay, slow motion. Step the right foot all the way back, heel first if possible, and it lands. Your left leg is going to come all the way across to the opposite side. Come all the way up. Lean onto the right thigh. Left arm up by the ear. Find that length through the fingertips. Press your hips slightly forward. Engage the glutes. And come all the way up. Left hand to the front of the mat. Right hand will follow. Step back. Plank. Knees drop. Rest of the body drops slowly. Low cobra. Drag the hands back. Pull the chest through, downward facing dog, lift hips, up and back. Let's take a big breath in and a big breath out. One more inhale and exhale. Look forward at your hands and slowly walk your feet all the way to the front. From the front of your mat, knees are bent, the head is heavy, the body is heavy. Start to roll up through your spine, nice and slow, piece by piece. Restack the body. Come all the way up, shoulders roll down the back. So you still face this way, I'm just going to turn to face you for this next pose. Vrikshasana tree pose. We're going to bring the right foot up the inside of the left leg. So in all honesty, it doesn't matter if your foot is right down here by your ankle or if it's right up here on the thigh. We're still standing on one leg, it's still a balance. Um, avoid putting it on your kneecap, so anywhere below, anywhere above, just find whatever's working for you today. Shift the weight into the left foot. You can bring your hands to prayer or onto the hips or whatever works. Prayer hands can help your balance. Right leg lifts. So everyone knows this pose, right? It's like the pose that people do at me when I say I'm a yoga teacher, everyone knows it. So it's really well known. It's great for practicing balance. We're just going to breathe as steady as possible. Now the thing is, balance is like a spectrum. We're not going to wake up one day and just have absolutely perfect balance. But what helps is if you have to step out because you lose your balance, rather than, you know, try and jump back in really quickly, just slow, be steady, breathe in a calm way and see if you can come back in with as much control. You've got more chance then of holding your balance. And we're always working with balance. There'll always be a tiny little bit of movement. If this is quite easy for you today, we can lift the hands up above the head, maybe opening them, maybe bringing them back together, maybe bringing them back down to heart center. You can do that a couple of times or you can just stay as you are in tree pose. Finding something to look at really helps. So maybe something that doesn't move. A spot on the floor or the wall. Okay, let's swap the legs. Lift the left leg. And I would match wherever you took that first leg. So roughly the same on each side. Finding your balance. One side may very well be different to the other side. And let go of perfect because it's not happening here at all. It doesn't really exist. So when we try to make everything perfect, there's just more pressure on ourselves actually to, um, and then we just fall out even more. So instead, just be here and try not to care if you put your foot down. It doesn't mean anything at all. It just means that you're working on your balance. That's all it is. Again, same option if you want to. Lift the arms, <clears throat> open up. 
hands together, bring them down. It's just an option, so if you're already wobbly here, you can stay here. You can do those arm variations a couple more times, or stay as you are. Breath is steady. Okay, release. So again, you're at the front of the mat, I'm just going to rejoin you. From the front of your mat, take a tiny step back, especially if you've not got a lot of room in front of you. Bring your hands to the hips, or in prayer if you prefer, but we can try hands on hips to begin. Bring the right leg up into the air. So imagine you're stepping onto a really big step, we're going to flex the foot, and we're not going to lean backwards with your torso. So imagine you're doing this against the wall, and your head and your lower back are touching the wall, so we're trying to stand up really nice and straight. Holding here. Now this left glute should be firing. If it's not, give it a prod and ask it to switch on. Okay, bring your hands to prayer if you haven't already. All we're going to do from here is tip. And it might just be a little tip forward and sending your leg a little bit back. And then coming all the way back up. We're just going to do a few of these. So I want this to be playful. It really doesn't matter about it being perfect. Almost imagine your body's like a seesaw, so as much as you start to tip forward, the back leg will start to lift. And just doing a few, there's not any kind of pace to this. You don't have to take this slow or fast, you just have to do it at your own pace. And then the next time that you take it back, see if you can come into warrior three, which looks like a capital T shape with the body. Now again, it doesn't matter if you come out of this. If you do, just don't jump back in. Take your time to come back in. Come all the way back up, knee to the chest. One more time, all the way back into warrior three. Left leg should be working to hold us steady here. And this time, right toes to the floor behind you. High lunge. So we did a low lunge before, we're gonna lift the arms. We can bend into both knees so we can keep that nice tall torso, lower, be lower belly's pulling in. And try not to go into this really deep back bend, instead try and keep the straight spine, straight arms. Bring your hands to prayer, down in front of your heart. We're going to go one more time to warrior three, but from this position. So start to lean forwards. Shift the weight, let the weight of your torso pull the back foot in. And lift it up. And then just step the feet together at the front. Shake them out if they need it. Same on the second side. So, standing at the front of the mat, standing tall. Weight is in your right foot. Hands can come onto the hips. Lift the left leg like you're standing on a big step. Flexing the foot, trying not to lean backwards. And then we're going to start to play with that tip. So hands to prayer. And we're just going to tip the chest forwards and the leg might start to go back a bit. Come all the way back up. Just do a few like this. It can be like a tiny tip and come up. Or it can be quite far. Each one can be a little bit different. Try and get that right glute working. If it's not switching on to support you, give it a little prod. Okay, let's go to the full warrior three. So start to send your left leg back. Lean forward, think capital T shape with the body. Proud chest, so we're not going to collapse through the chest. And hold. And then slowly come all the way back up, knee to the chest. Try not to touch the floor, although it doesn't really matter if you do. And all the way back, warrior three. From warrior three, that left foot finds the floor behind you. Adjust your feet if you need to, bend both knees, lift the arms up, pull the lower belly in, nice sort of neutrality with the pelvis and the spine, no back bending here. Reach up through the fingertips. Hands to prayer, bring them down. We're gonna go back to warrior three one final time. Shift the weight forwards into the right foot. So imagine the weight of your chest is going to pull the back leg in. Keep leaning, keep leaning, keep leaning. Drag the back leg in. 
lift it up, hold, and come all the way up to standing, shake out the legs, all right then, feet together, hands to prayer, inhale, lift the hands, look up, exhale, fold down over the legs, you can bend the knees, remember, inhale, lift up halfway, exhale, step back to plank, with or without your knees, lower as slowly as you can onto the belly. Just a low cobra. Lift the head, lift the chest. Pull your chest through your arms. And downwards facing dog. Lift hips up and back. Okay. Bring your big toes to touch each other. So the feet are together in your downwards facing dog. Start to walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat and bend your knees more and more and more until you're coming into this little crouch position at the back of your mat you're looking forwards and your knees are really tucked up to the chest we're on our tiptoes little balance challenge now so forget it being perfect you might come out you might have to put the hands down it's not about perfect it's about practicing so hands come up to your heart in prayer and just find this balance on the tiptoes Feel like you're trying to squeeze your ankles in towards each other, the heels in towards each other. And just find this balance. We can just stay here. If you want to change this and challenge yourself, you can always look up to the ceiling and see if you can maintain that balance. And take your hands back down to the floor. We're going to lift the hips and walk forwards into downwards facing dog. From down dog, drop your knees, take them wide across the mat. So the knees are wide, the big toes touch each other. Push your hips back to the heels, drop the head down into child's pose. And whilst you're here, completely relax your body. Let the forehead feel heavy on the floor. Let the arms just completely release. And then come all the way up to a seated position. So lift your head, lift your torso, walk the hands in, bring your legs out in front of you. Come to lie down. We're gonna end our practice with just a couple of supine poses. So. Right knee points towards the ceiling, we're going to lie on our backs and the left ankle just comes to the right knee. Left knee guides away from you. In this thread the needle pose, we're just going to hold it here. We're not going for lots of effort, we're just going to hold it without really doing much at all. So just close your eyes. And you can either just stay completely still or it can be nice to just rock your hips a little bit side to side. Let's just swap your legs in your own time. Left foot to the floor. Right foot comes up. And up to you. Eyes are closed. You can either stay just completely still or just rock your hips a little bit side to side, seeing how it feels. And this is a lazy version of the pose. It doesn't need to be any kind of push or pull. You're just making a shape with your body, that's all. Okay, release the right leg down. Just hug both knees up into the chest. Take your hands around the knees, give them a squeeze in and just draw some circles with your knees. So we're doing this to massage your back onto the floor. So make sure your lower back is down. And just see how it feels to draw these circles, maybe very slow, maybe quite fast. Okay, hug your knees in towards the chest. Give them a big squeeze in. Keep the right knee in. Let the left leg go straight out along the floor in front of you. We're going to find a twist from here. So your right knee is to the chest. Left hand onto the right knee. 
right arm's gonna just come out to the side of you. It can either stretch out across the floor or more at a 90 degree angle from the elbow. And then use your left hand to draw the right knee across your body. Now, I very, very rarely see anyone's knee touch the floor. That's not the point. We're gonna keep the right shoulder pressing into the floor. Don't let the right shoulder lift. Keep it rooted down. And just take your knee as far as feels okay. And again, this is no pushing, no pulling. It's just a soft twist. Stay here, take a couple of breaths. And back into center. Swap your legs over. Right leg extends, left knee comes in. Right hand is on the left knee, left arm is out to the side, maybe the elbow is bent if you don't have enough space. And use your right hand to pull the left knee across the body to the right hand side. And again, only go as far as you can, keeping this left shoulder really grounded down into the floor. Left shoulder blade, left shoulder pressing down firmly. And slowly guide your knee back into the center. Bring both knees in towards you, give them a really big squeeze. And then come to lie down on your back. Let your legs go straight out in front of you. Arms come down by the sides. This is Shavasana, which is our final position. And it's really important. Some people think it's not and they think well I've done my physical activity now I'm going to get on with my day but instead just take a moment to let your body feel whatever it feels. Take a moment to let your body absorb your practice, absorb everything you've just done. And whilst you're here just take some slightly deeper breaths. Notice if your mind is wandering off onto other things. If it is, just try and pause those thoughts for now. You can come back to them later on. Let's just take five more deep breaths. If you want to stay, I would stay here for five minutes. If you're ready to end your practice, slowly wiggle your fingers, toes, head. Find a big stretch. Bring your knees up into the chest. And if you can keep the eyes closed, then do. Just slowly bring yourself up to a seated position. You can sit kneeling, you can sit with your legs crossed, you can sit however is comfy for you. Sit up nice and tall. And just observe your body, the breath, your mind. Notice any tiny or big changes. And then to end this practice, we bring the hands to prayer at the heart center. Bow your head to your hands. This is a symbol of gratitude. You're taking a moment to be thankful for everything your body can do. Thankful for your breath. Thankful for this practice, whether you're new to it or whether you're quite experienced. Thankful 
grateful to yourself for taking the time out of your day to do this. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.